Hello and welcome to Enter Climate. My name is Shalin and in today's video we will analyze one of the most crucial questions faced by a renewable energy business at the time of its setup that is where to source the funds for the initial installation cost. It is a common knowledge that solar energy installation can pay for themselves within 3 to 4 years. But if you are starting a business, this additional cost may deter you from making your business solar powered. To address this challenge and make it easier for people to embrace the upfront investment hurdle for installing solar energy plants, public sectors and private sector banks have been instructed by the Ministry of Finance to offer loans at reasonable cost following the Government and the Reserve Bank of India guidelines. In this video, we will see all the present financial schemes available today for solar projects and what are the benefits of installing a solar power plant. So, the major solar project financing institutes of India include the Indian public sector and private sector banks. These banks offer debt finances for various solar projects at interest rates ranging from 9.5 to 10.5% per annum. For instance, the SBI is said to finance the largest capacity of 15,000 megawatt among the public sector banks. Next is the Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency. This is a non-banking financial institute under the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. This provides term loans for renewable energy and thermal energy efficiency projects. They offer finance up to 75% of the solar project cost, conduct credit rating and determine interest rates based on the risk assessment. IREDA also sources funds from international agencies and banks. The next in this list is the International Finance Cooperation. It is the financing division of the World Bank. IFC provides debt and investment support to solar projects in India. They offer advisory services to state governments and invest in solar companies also. This list also includes Asian Development Bank which is actively involved in financing solar projects in India. ADB offers financing support under the India Solar Generation Guarantee Facility or ISGGF and provides direct financing and guarantees for projects over 25 megawatt. Now next is the REC or the Rural Electrification Cooperation which focuses on promoting solar energy projects. REC provides financial assistance for power generation projects. They propose a debt to equity ratio of 70-30 for private sector borrowers and follow lead banks ratio for other cases. Next is NBFCs or non-banking financial companies and some other international financiers that provide financial support for solar power projects. Now, there have been some recent government initiatives to encourage entrepreneurs to install RE energy projects. For instance, in the union budget, the MNRE ministry allocated Rs 5,753 crores and Rs 300 crores for green energy corridor schemes. Apart from it, an additional capital infusion of Rs 1,000 crores were provided to the Solar Energy Corporation of India or SCCI and Rs 1,500 crores to Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency under the union budget. The customs duty on solar inverters were increased from 5 to 20 percent and solar lattens increased from 5 to 15 percent to promote domestic production. SJVN Limited, a PSU under the Ministry of Power, entered an MOU with Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency to provide services for green energy projects. Also, a production-linked incentive worth Rs 4,500 crores were announced for high-efficiency solar PV module manufacturing. In addition to this, an inter-ministerial committee was established under Niti Aayog to focus on energy modelling through the India Energy Modelling Forum or IEMF. The government now aims to add 30 gigawatt of renewable energy capacity along its western border, specifically in Gujarat and Rajasthan. The government of India also plans to implement 238 million US dollars in the national mission on advanced ultra supercritical technologies for cleaner coal utilization. Customs and excise duty benefits were also provided to the solar rooftop sector by the ministry, reducing the setup cost and promote growth. Indian Railway is implementing energy efficient measures and maximize the use of clean fuel to reduce the emission levels by 33% till 2030. Now, another important factor that needs to be discussed here is the evaluation mechanisms by lenders and financing institutions 
for funding such projects. So both equity and debt finance investors assess the legal, consent and technical due diligence areas of the project. Now the equity stage due diligence is based on preliminary technical information while the project finance due diligence occurs at the later stage. Whether it is a solar, hydrogen, wind or any other type of technology, due diligence is essential. It allows the developers, owners, investors, financial institutions, etc. who are involved in transaction to assess the risk involved in the investment. Now, as a part of due diligence, there are certain efforts and requirements that must be met by the developer, such as considerable efforts is required to meet the lender's requirement during the due diligence process, realistic financial models with contingencies and a sensible construction programs are essential. The process may identify risk and require design or component usage changes to make the project bankable for lenders. It is now evident that solar power generating sector has become attractive to investors due to government support and the improved economies of scale. Renewable energy will be crucial in meeting energy demands in the future that is expected to reach 15,820 TWH by 2040. By 2030, the government plans to establish renewable energy capacity of 523 GW, including 73 GW from hydro sources. Government is dedicated to increasing the utilization of clean energy sources and is already engaged in various large-scale sustainable power projects while actively promoting green energy projects. Moreover, businesses based on renewable energy have the potential to generate numerous employment opportunities also particularly in the rural areas. Now, in order to get the benefits of the government scheme, you can contact our business startup experts from the details shown for assistance in financing your business. So that was all for today's video. Please like and share the video. Thank you for watching.